Okay, so, so skip a slide, slide. And, and just so you know, um, I was one of the earlier ones to do this, and, uh, and um, I caught, uh, you know, there was, some, there was some notoriety of being one of the first in New Hampshire to do the crowdfunding. Um, there's an, you can go there now, there's everybody's on it now, right? And then, uh, and then I got to know the, the uh, wonderful uh, Miss Kathleen Callahan here from the New Hampshire Business Review who wrote an article about this and all of a sudden it got in into a lot of press um, and uh, I think it was a slow news front of all. <laughs> Kathleen wrote about me and everybody picked up her article and, um, uh, and it, it got into a number of different um, uh, magazines. Uh, CF, CFO magazine called me up. Yeah, it was really, that's interesting. Uh, so I was doing interviews for, uh, for some period of time. And then, um, and then I caught the, um, I, I thought this was so, so neat that I had taken an idea and I had gotten money for it and I had gotten, you know, uh, verification of my idea. And I'm just kind of the kind of guy that thinks that, well, you know, I'd like to spread that around. So, uh, so I, I wrote a book. Um, uh, this, uh, this book is uh, something that's gonna be uh, published I was just told yesterday you can pre-order it on Amazon.com, but it's actually not coming out till, uh, yeah, till December. And, and what I've done is at this point I've done six or seven crowdfunding campaigns, and I've just tried to put all the knowledge of what I've learned into this book here uh, so that you know, anybody that wants to learn about this stuff you know, can pick it up and it's a decent, you know, decent read. It'll give you a lot of background of things I discovered what other people say. I interviewed a lot of people in the industry. So anyway, um, that's that's the book. And uh, yeah, and the next slide, please. Those are the Iron Buds. Those are the real ones. Those are the ones I came in here goofing around with when I first came up here. So uh, here's the big secret. You know, uh, this is not exactly revolutionary, but if the, if uh, they always tend to break in here, right? Um, if if you break one of these things, well, if the earbud comes off. So you can buy this. This is not expensive. The wire is not expensive. So um, you can repair these things. Not only that, you can kind of invest some. You, know, you probably anybody knows um, uh, uh, Beats and uh, Dr. Dre and Monster and stuff like that. You know those, those things cost 150 to 250 dollars, and um, they don't do this. And when they and then and when they break, you got to send them back to the company and so on. Uh, you know, we, we're doing okay with these. We're we're, we're selling them now, and, and uh, you know, people are people are definitely catching on to the idea. Um, will it be real big? I don't know, but it certainly is garnering enough interest that we're following it. The point I'm trying to make is none of this would have occurred without this Kickstarter to allow me to try and start the whole thing. Okay. Uh, next slide. Okay, now, this is the meat and potatoes. How many more minutes do I have here? A <laughs> lot. I want to teach you some of the things I've learned about being on the front edge of this reward-based crowdfunding. And, by the way, one of the frustrating things, by the way, uh, I'm not the only guy that's written this book. I think there's four or five of them coming out this fall. There's not a lot of information on this. It's it's kind of, it's so cutting edge that people are kind of like doing it. The, the, the independent filmmaker that that's making the documentary about uh, the indigent or, or or you know poverty in New Guinea and so on, she's making a DVD. She's not writing everybody to say how she did it. Uh, so you've only got a certain number of people that, that have done a number of them. I, I think I'm right up there. I've done six or seven of these things now. Uh, not all of them were successful. That's good. I had to figure out why. <laughs> so some of the things that I think um, you should know if you're going to do this reward-based stuff, if you're going to make your, you know, the great American, write the great American novel, uh, do the, the film that you've always wanted, um, you, there's so many things that you can do on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Uh, by the way, the ranking, Kickstarter's number one. There's reasons for this, but I'm not gonna go into it. Kickstarter's number one, Indiegogo is number two, and number three is Rocket Hub. And there's a number of others out there that do specialty 
social um, enterprise funding. Uh, there's some wonderful things going on with that. Um, so if you're going to do something like that, let me tell you what I've learned. And the pros and cons of reward-based crowdfunding, just to frame this all in your mind as you do your research, here are the pros. I've got five of them. Minimal financial risk. It didn't cost anything to put a, a project up on Kickstarter. Nothing. Time, my time, only that. Number two thing I've also I mentioned already. It it tests the demand. You know, hey, remember focus groups? And I and they still do that, right? Well, you can get that done for free now on the internet. You can find out whether, and oh, oh, and the people, by the way, when I say test demand, they're voting with their money. Oh, they'll also tell you what they think. <laughs> Take it from me. They will tell you what, to, that's one of the problems, by the way. Sometimes you get these people who are just flaming and say, it's the stupidest thing on earth. Uh, some of the colors that we chose for our earbuds, one of the things we discovered, my partner Paul over here and I discovered, is that uh, these, these right here are maple. Uh, we've had people that come to us and say, what kind of a moron would wear wood in their ears? Um, we have maple, we have walnut, we have rosewood, right? And then others will say, that is the most beautiful earbud I've ever seen. Um, this is some of the things you find out when you're dealing with crowds, that there's, there's some, you know, what I was hoping is I would find 80% of them wanted the, the, you know, the maple, 20% of them wanted it. Uh, it was some things that does occur, but you will find out what the demand is for your product. You will find out what people think about it. You'll get a lot of opinions. Okay. Um, something that Matt is, is, is going to talk a little bit with the equity and so on. One of the advantages of this reward base is that you keep 100% ownership in the business. Now, equity... Equ raising equity is good because it can bring a lot of money into your company. In some cases, it's the only way to grow. But when you're small, you know, not having anybody telling you, how's my money doing, wanting to see financials every month can be a very good thing. I don't have to give financials to anybody. I just make, a, I just make earbuds, you know, and, and send them to them. Um, you also keep, a, a, a sort of a subset of that is, you also keep control of your business. You don't, and you not only, it, it not, it's not just an equity issue, but it's like if, if the auteur theory of filmmaking is one guy, you know, Francis Ford Coppola, you know, his, everything that he wanted done in his films was done. He was the visionary guy. And that, the, the, you've got the auteur theory when you're talking about um, uh, reward-based crowdfunding. You're the person, you're in charge, you call all the shots, for better or for worse. Sometimes it's better to have some other eyeballs looking over, which is why I have Paul. <laughs> um, another thing that you may not realize, and this is the last of the pros, is you'd be surprised when you build your group up of the fan club that you assemble. The fan club you assemble is amazing. Some of these people, I have people, when they heard this thing about the detachable earbuds, say to me, you know, this is, this is just remarkable. You're trying to save the earth. I mean, all this stuff, it was great. I mean, and there is part of that, by the way. You don't, you know, you don't throw these out. You know, these are rebuildable, repairable. That's, it's about as green as it gets. So some people think that that is wonderful, and they go out there and they tell all their friends, this guy's doing this, it's so cool. It, it, it propagates through the social media. I'm here to tell you, you'd be surprised how many people come through and help you out because they believe in what you're doing. Folks, I'm making these earbuds, but I'm telling you, a lot of the promotion of it was because people liked what I was doing. They just liked the idea. You'll find that out in crowdfunding. Okay, quickly. The cons is not all positive. <laughs> Nothing is, right? except working with Tom Elliott and the idea of Greenhouse. <laughs> um, there are cons to, to crowdfunding. Um, okay, 
it takes a lot of time to do crowdfunding. You have a lot of preparation to do. It's you can make a lot of missteps, and and, 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 and you won't raise the money you want if you don't do some things right. Um, a lot of that I cover in the book, but you don't have to buy the book. It's all over the net. You know the right things to do with crowdfunding. Uh, you need a good video. You need a, you need a you need to really pitch what you're doing and so on and so forth. I, I could go on into that for half an hour. During the crowdfunding process, when we were doing Iron Buds, you're working continuously because you're getting emails from all over the world, all time zones, asking the same thing over and over, but each person's important. You know, get back to them. You're maintaining your Facebook, you're maintaining your social media, you're tweeting and so on. Now, I'm, I'm here to tell you, if you've, you've got a day job and you're gonna do something crowdfunding, be prepared for the amount of work. It's like a second job. It is not being thrown up on Kickstarter and watching the money come in. You can do that, but you're not gonna get the money that you want. You've got to really push this. You've got to promote it. You've got to get people excited so that they're doing lots of likes and it gets to their, their friends with the likes and, and that kind of stuff. Number three, lack of guidance. And like I was saying, uh, you know, this stuff is kind of cutting edge. The, there's not a lot of guidance out there because most people are doing it and, and then running with the money and fixing what you know, doing what they're doing. And just a few people are really writing about it. And a lot of the people I found personally that are writing about it haven't done it. And uh, there's just, I've seen some things that are like, I'll read and I'll think, I'm not sure they've done crowdfunding because that kind of, it sounds like the kind of thing I would say if I hadn't actually done it. So be, just be prepared for that. The lack of guidance is a little bit disturbing because what you'd like to do is go to a blog that says, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you're gonna get $150,000. It's just not like that, not yet. It's still kind of too new. Okay, for some people, number four, it's very high visibility. If anybody doesn't want to be on the net with their full name and your address, Having people research you and know everything about you, 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 you probably want to rethink this because the crowdfunding people want to see that. They're fine-tuned. They want to see who the person is behind it. And, uh, and th th that doesn't bother me that much, but it does some people. So your visibility is peak. Um, number five, be, you know, if you're, not, if you're not a social media guru, start learning to be one quickly which is not that hard. Um, learn how to get out there and work the Facebooks and get the name out there. Find out what Reddit and the Dig and all the others are and, 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 and how you get you know, your project out into the internet so it starts going places, people start sending it. You've got to know that. If you don't know it, at least team up with somebody that does. Um, and um, this is something that would be interesting to hear from from Mike and, and from Matt, um, crowdfunding is not as professional as going and getting a regular loan. And by that I mean, this has nothing to do with the fact that it's bad. If you go to a banker, or you go to a VC, or you go to uh, Angel, you know it's kind of an established relationship. Hi, I'm the entrepreneur and I need $100,000 to start my earbud company. Um, I, you know, here, here's my house for collateral. Um, here's, you know, all these other things. Um, I'm stepping off away from the camera, aren't I? Um, here's all these other things. You give me the loan, and you shake hands, and then you can go start your company. Not with crowdfunding. There's, there's contractual, legal requirements on the parties, and crowdfunding is different. First of all, everybody wants to be part of what you're doing because it's so exciting. You're emailing and messaging them all the time. So that's an integral part. Um, so, you know, some, it, it, it's, it's neat to say, hey, I got $60,000. You know, getting $60,000 from the bank would have been pretty nice too. So last piece, I need to wrap up now, right? Okay, last slide. Actually, by the way, quickie, uh, this was how, we, when we were raising um, the earbud money, uh, this is kind of the typical adoption curve. 
remember I was speaking about social media? Somebody, I'm not sure how they did it, got me on Reddit, right on the front page of Reddit, and boom, within a couple days. And do you see how it went up from there? That if that didn't occur, I probably would have raised half as much money. There's your social media thing. Uh, next slide. Most important point of this is if you're making a DVD, if you want to write a book or something and it's like your own private project, that's one thing. If you're going to start a company, let me tell you what I learned and you will find this out on the internet. This is, this is a fairly typical um, you know, curve of revenue with startup companies. This really has nothing to do with the internet. It's just the way it works. You have a, uh, a seed time where you know you take your idea, which they call creatively the valley of death, right? What that means, of course, is you know the whole thing will just come apart. What if the prototype doesn't work? Anyway, um, you'll get to a point where you hit break even, and then you start making more money, and you need income, you need investment money to start building up here. I'm here to tell you, I just I've done this several times now. This is what you get with crowdfunding. You get just enough money to get your idea off the ground and get earbuds to everybody that wants to buy them. And then you're sitting here right now going, and this is literally where I am, I've got a company in my hands and I need another $100,000. The company's in my hands and I can use more money because I need to buy inventory and so on to get up to the next level. Keep that in mind. This isn't going to be instant company. Now, Tom, if I could just take a couple minutes, I'm going to do a lead in for Matt, if that's okay. Well, actually, uh, Mike Norman's next. Oh, is he? Okay. It's actually the same lead in. Mike, can you hear me? Okay. Um, but I'm going to do a little. Are you, are you going to talk about equity? So no, I, I need just a minute in between. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, I just want to set you up for Mike Norman. Uh, Mike Norman is uh, a co-founder of, uh, of WeFunder. Uh, he, the, the WeFunder is one of the websites that is up and running now, uh, gearing up big time for the equity crowdfunding to occur. And uh, and I just want to give you just a, I thought I wrote this all down. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, what you need to know about equity crowdfunding. Um, two minutes. The Great Depression. Can I go back a little? Uh, the Great Depression uh, was because there weren't regulations. And uh, um, who was it? Roosevelt, the New Deal. Uh, in his New Deal, they had a package called the Securities Act of 1933, and in that it said, "All right, you know, no more land deals in Florida, no more shadow companies selling equities that never exist." If you're a company and you want to sell equity, there's report, the government's now watching you guys, okay? You're not ripping off the American public. Look what happened during the Depression and so on. So the Securities Act of 1933 came out with a lot of regulations saying, you want to sell equities? This is how you're going to do it. And it ain't for the little guy. It's for the big guy. It's a lot of, a lot of regulations, a lot of money involved. Uh, there were no computers in They were made out of sticks and stuff. Um, the, this rolls around till we have the whole world connected via the internet, and crowdfunding is going on, and all us crowdfunders are going, wait a minute, why can't we sell equity? Because everybody wants to buy equity. It's legal in Europe, and it's in, in various other countries around the world, and it's doing super. It's doing super, but not in the United States. This makes no sense. Um, well, the Jobs Act, Obama's Jobs Act, which was signed April 5th, it's now legal. Equity crowdfunding is legal. They gave the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, 270 days to promulgate the rules, which means first thing next year, the rules come out and every small business that wants to sell equity, they're gonna have rules they have to attend to, but they're not the 1933 rules. So what is going to happen early next year is some wild stuff when equity crowdfunding hits. It's not going to extinguish the old stuff. The old stuff is for different kind of things. But equity is about here, and it's going to be pretty fascinating stuff when it hits. 
So um, that is um, what uh, Mike Norman's going to talk about, and um, and uh, and uh, Matt Benson also. So that's uh, that's my crowdfunding 101. Hope hope I didn't try and pack too much in. <laughs>